Hello, I'm Kevin Smet, and I'm a student at Learning Alias. I want to talk to you today about surface fillet and tangent angle and what role it plays with a surface fillet. So here I have a surface set of a side body of an automobile and I want you to notice that it has a character line running all the way along it and this now needs to get blended with a small fillet. So you can see the character line. Now the first thing I want you to notice is the crispness of this character line will control the quality of the fillet. So you can see especially with aliasing uh, if you don't have anti-aliasing turned on you can see it kind of aliases over here which is good it means it's a crisp line and then over here it kind of starts blending a little bit and then here it gets crisp again and then it stays fairly crisp throughout so the problem we've got here is about right in the middle now we can see this as well with uh, curvature diagnostic and we look at the maximum curvature at any point along the surface set and you can see that the curvature is not homogeneous it's pretty much flat at this range but it's already quite curved in the middle and if we make this bigger we can start to see that we also have a little dip over here and we also have a little dip over here but you know this is kind of part of the wheel arch already so that's okay so we'll kind of blend out it won't be as crisp but that's okay it's supposed to uh, the, here it's not and this is definitely not going to be good either so if we slide this further up we can see also on the sidewall that the curvature here sags down and basically this means that the tangent angle between these surface sets along the crease on the entire interconnected set of surfaces that define the sidewall body is not constant. Now what that will do is it will cause a highlight that is not constant. It may even cause your blends to fail to start um, turning in on themselves and when you want to thicken the geometry you will not be able to do so successfully. So I'm going to go back to the showroom shader and I'm going to put the blend on here. So I'm going to toggle the model back on and I'm going to go to the surface edit tab, the surfaces tab, and then tubular offset. And I think I'll go for eight. I don't want any surface created and want curves on surface. Make sure to check chain select and then the bottom first. And, uh, oh automatic. All right. Now we do the other side. It's like nothing. Now we've got a gap. The gap is constant, so in effect we've got kind of a chordal fillet thing going on. And um, now this has its benefits and its disbenefits. The benefit is this will build quite cleanly, unlike the surface fillet, which sometimes doesn't know what to do, especially if your surface set is not already clean. Uh, we're going to create freeform blends and squares to fill this up and we'll control them and then we will tweak the surface of the primary surfaces to make the fillet good. So it's kind of an iterative process and um, we do not have tangent edges though that will tell us if the surface set is good or not. So we're going to have to rely on our eyes and really the highlights of the surface set. So what I'm going to do is go to freeform blend and it's pretty important right here that I use curvature on both sides. Uh, by using curvature I'm really going to get a bad fillet, um, a bad blend if the tangent angle isn't right. So I'm going to have very good analysis tool, diagnostic tool, to see if I've got what I've got going on. And, you know, I'm going to put this shape on one again and edge align, edge align. Now, I don't know how this is going to edge align for me, so I'm just going to go for connect ends right now. Let's see what default gives me. All right, I'll go for default. I'll worry about this later. It's not really part of the exercise. And let's see, we want five. And we want multiple surfaces. Bezier. And that sounds about right. Now, if I can get this to align, I will. Um, it kind of skews it up a little bit, doesn't it? Connect ends, maybe. All right, this is good enough. It closes up the volume. 
So this is our, let me go back into there, turn off continuity check, and it will auto recalculate. So this is the first portion of our fillet, of our blend. So that looks pretty okay. Let's put on the diagnostic, and we can see that's pretty nice. This is kind of what we want. So it has a constant curvature profile and then it kind of fades out a little bit it completely fades out actually and that's okay we want that this is going to be the wheel arch I'm not sure for this kind of feature that this would be the correct patch layout for it but anyway the curvature is looking okay and that's part of this exercise so let's continue let's make another freeform blend over here and this goes pretty fast and usually I leave the shape at one the fillet is not the problem. The primary surfaces tend to be the problem. Now I'm going to make a square for this middle portion. And on my square control, I'm going to select all the edges. And then I'm going to ask for curvature everywhere. I will go for explicit control, 5 by 5, continuity check, and collinear options. I'm going to pick 1, which is this boundary, and 3, which is the opposite side. Um, I don't know if I could go for the other ones as well, but I'm going to refrain for now. And I'm going to up this until I get continuity. And you can see I'm never really going to get continuity. The problem here is, oh, I've got continuity. Well, yeah, oh, I've got continuity. Excuse me, but still it requires a lot of spans. Uh, once we start tweaking our main surfaces and it has less fluctuations in there, it's also going to require less mathematic to get to the curvature continuity that we really want. Nine spans is a little much, but that's okay. The surface is a little wobbly. So that's a sign. If you need a lot of mathematic to get curvature continuity for these kinds of um, small blends on crease lines, that might be something to go for. Now, I want you to realize um, you look at this highlight and here it's flowing and here it suddenly goes up and then down but that's not the really uh, most significant problem of it all it's just look at this this is crazy the primary surface is really not good enough the way we see this best is with a plot like this now anytime you see red and blue next to each other um, that means that the surface normals are pointing in different directions. Go to surface edit, set orientation, and just set the surface normals either to blue or either to yellow, whatever you want, as long as they are in the same direction. And we can see the problem immediately with the shader. And you can see the tangent angle that we saw all the way at the beginning of the tutorial uh, is is to blame for this is directly influencing this we can adjust the fillet all we want the fillet is not the problem it's the primary surface that's the problem we could have fixed this first um, of course but it's pretty easy to fix this with the fillet we will be able to really judge